Uh, our next speaker uh, comes from Wake Forest Institute of Regenerative Medicine, and uh, is talk, he's going to talk about thymic tissue regeneration using natural scaffolds. Please welcome John Jackson. Yes, I'd like to uh, thank Aubrey and the Sins Foundation for giving me the opportunity to speak with you this morning or this afternoon. And uh, what I'm going to do is talk, again, uh, a little bit more about uh, the production of natural scaffolds. And in this case, we're going to talk about uh, uh, thymic uh, tissue. And uh, what we'd like to do for our overall goal is to generate a functional thymus ex vivo. And Aubrey, I first met him in uh, the spring of this year. And he came to Wake Forest to look for someone to, to work on a thymus project. <clears throat> and since I was the one that had uh, a little bit of immunology background, I got picked to, to work on this. So what I'm going to show you today is a little bit immature. We don't have a lot of data, but I, I'd like to give you uh, some of our thoughts on how we're going to approach this. So the objective is then to decellularize uh, the thymus and then uh, develop recellularization methods that results in uh, a, a functioning uh, thymus for both in vitro and in, in, in vivo systems. So our rationale is that uh, the thymus undergoes uh, involution during aging. So as uh, uh, pretty soon after birth, uh, the thymus is as big as it's going to get. And it starts decreasing uh, as you age. And it accelerates a little bit at puberty. And by the time you get to my age, I have just a very vestigial thymus. Most of it's fatty tissue at this point. Um, with the uh, decrease in thymic size, you also get decreases in uh, T cell immunity associated with this. And uh, by this, uh, we uh, mean the reduction in T cell repertoire, which means that uh, each T cell receptor uh, has a specificity. And what happens is the clones come out of the thymus. Uh, uh, you don't have as many naive T cells. So your ability to recognize a wide range of antigens are decreased as you age and as your thymus uh, involutes. And, uh, you also get a shift toward memory T cells, which also affects the ability uh, of you to recognize foreign agents. Now, the thymus uh, forms from the third pharyngeal pouch, uh, and it's comprised of uh, endoderm and some neural crest mesenchyme. And as it develops, uh, uh, buds off of the uh, third pharyngeal pouch, it starts migrating down and the two lobes meet uh, right above the heart, and, and it sets right, uh, right there above the heart. Uh, lymphoid precursors then start seeding uh, the uh, uh, thymus on about uh, day E11, E10.5 or so. So these precursors uh, uh, come from the bone marrow. They seed the thymus as it's migrating down um, and uh, you get additional seeding of the thymus uh, occurs in uh, uh, adult life, but it's not a continuous seeding. It looks like the seeding comes in waves uh, through the life of the individual. Now, uh, here's a, a picture of a normal thymus. This happens to be a rat thymus. Uh, there's uh, slightly, uh, a little bit of different architecture with human. Uh, but this is a very good example of a rat thymus. As you can see, there are dark and light colored areas. The dark areas are the cortex of the thymus. The light areas are the medulla. Uh, you have a capsule here, and you have trabeculae that run through the lobes uh, of the thymus. Uh, within this, you have uh, your uh, developing uh, thymocytes. You also have populations of epithelial cells that have uh, a specificity for medulla or cortex. And other cells that are involved in, in this are dendritic cells and fibroblasts that you can find throughout the thymus. Now this is a slide uh, showing what happens during uh, thymocyte maturation. And it's kind of a dance of lymphocytes as they come into the thymus. 
And they usually come in, like I said, uh, from pre precursors from the bone marrow. Uh, they come into the uh, cortical medullary junction. So that's where they enter the thymus. And at that point, uh, they start a migration pattern that's very specific. And they uh, either gain or lose uh, specific uh, markers as they uh, migrate toward the subcapsular area. As you can see here, they're designated by uh, 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 double negative one population through double negative four. And the double negative uh, stands for uh, the uh, uh, non-expression of CD4 and CD8, which are uh, mature uh, stage markers on uh, thymocytes. So when you see that designation, uh, uh, it means that they do not express uh, these mature cell markers. And as they move toward the subcapsule region, um, they take uh, a sharp uh, U-turn and migrate back toward uh, the medulla region. And as they do, uh, they come under uh, specific pressures, in this case a positive selection pressure uh, within the cortex. And this is where uh, you positively select T cells that can that have the ability to interact uh, with uh, major histocompatibility complexes through their T cell receptor. And so if you do not get that interaction, uh, the cells that do not interact uh, uh, die or undergo apoptosis, and it's been called death by neglect. So they, you have to have a T cell receptor that functions and recognizes uh, a major histocompatibility complex. So if they don't do that, uh, the, the ones that don't do uh, the interaction, they undergo apoptosis. The ones that have a positive interaction are positively selected, and then they migrate into the medulla region. And here, they become um, single positive. So they take on a, a mature phenotype, and they undergo negative selection. And by this, uh, the epithelial uh, cells in here, uh, in conjunction with the MHC molecules, as well as dendritic uh, cells then uh, uh, select cells that can interact with the MHC but do not activate after interacting. Uh, and if they do activate, they then are uh, undergo apoptosis because this uh, selects a non-self-reacting uh, uh, T cell that then migrates out of the medulla into the peripheral circulation and sees the secondary lymphoid organs. So it's a, a really a, a, a dance of uh, lymphocytes going through a full stage maturation uh, with a positive and a negative selection uh, uh, associated with the different regions within the thymus. Now, uh, one of the major uh, uh, populations is the thymic epithelial cells. And they are, uh, as we stated, uh, responsible for the positive selection of thymocytes. Uh, and there's been some molecules that uh, uh, a serine protease and a, a proteasome subunit that has uh, been identified uh, that is involved in the selection of the CD4 and CD8 cells. And within the medullary region, the medullary epithelial cells are responsible for the negative selection by expressing this autoimmune regulator, AIR. And so those are then extremely important. Uh, in this whole thymocyte maturation uh, cascade. Uh, in the mouse, uh, there's uh, a common progenitor that has been identified for the epithelial cells. And it was originally defined as this MTS24 positive cell. And it was shown in early studies that the, uh, the uh, MTS24 negative cells, uh, cells could not repopulate the thymus. But subsequently, it's been found that both a uh, MTS24 positive and negative uh, population can uh, repopulate the epithelial compartment, uh, particularly if you pre-select by epithelial markers themselves. So the earliest studies probably identified a 20, uh, uh, MTS24 negative population that was not epithelial uh, in nature. And another important transcriptional factor is the FOXN1. And without this, you get no maturation and development of the epithelial compartment within the thymus. So what happens with this age-related thymic uh, involution or changes within the, uh, the thymus? 
And unfortunately, there's not really a, a, a clear answer to what's really going on, why the thymus involutes uh, uh, over time. But there are several areas that you can uh, uh, look at that may potentially have an effect. And one of this is the reduced thymic epithelial and thymocyte uh, interaction. And for the uh, epithelial cells to fully mature, as well as the thymocytes to fully mature, they must interact together. So if you take away the thymocytes, the epithelial cells will not undergo final maturation. If you take away the epithelial cells, the thymocytes will not uh, matru uh, undergo maturation. So there is a cell-cell uh, interaction uh, that's extremely important uh, for uh, fully functional thymus. Now, there's also changes in cytokine and growth factor production over uh, 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 time. And uh, you can have increases in leukemia, uh, leukemia inhibitory factor, IL-6, uh, TGF-beta. All of these have uh, negative effects in terms uh, of thymic uh, uh, maintenance. They will induce thymic involution if added exogenously. Another one is the sex steroid production. So uh, the involution uh, increases as uh, the sex steroid production uh, increases. So this is what happens uh, around uh, uh, puberty uh, to accelerate that uh, thymic involution. And there may also be changes in the hematopoietic extended of progenitor cells. And as we age, we know we have uh, uh, certain changes in the hematopoietic compartment within the bone marrow. So if you change those cells that first seed the thymus, then you may eventually affect the downstream of, uh, from T cell production. So all these are potentials, but nothing has been definitively defined uh, associated with the age-related thymic changes. So what's been done in terms of uh, overcoming uh, uh, this thymic, uh, thymic change or involution? One is to use sex steroid inhibition, and there is a luteinizing hormone, releasing hormone agonist uh, that has been uh, tried, and it actually reverses thymic involution, actually in aged individuals. And uh, this has uh, uh, been tried in humans as well as animal models. So this actually works, but unfortunately, it does have some side effects uh, whenever you start uh, modulating uh, uh, the hormonal levels. Uh, also, uh, the uh, addition of uh, keratinocyte growth factor uh, enhances the production of T cells and actually uh, can reverse a little bit of the epithelial cell loss uh, within the thymus. And IL-7 administration is extremely important in terms of T cell maturation, but it's per, uh, 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 administration within an aged individual increases T cell export, but it's not clear if it reverses some of the age-related effects within the, in the thymus that's seen. Uh, it may actually affect uh, some of the extra thymic uh, T cell production as well. Uh, but all of these uh, are areas that have been looked at in trying to uh, uh, change uh, thymic uh, involution in vivo. Now with ex uh, vivo uh, uh, T cell production, uh, over uh, the last 30 years or so, a number of culture systems have been, been developed to look at this. And uh, uh, thymic uh, stromal monolayers, a 2D culture system has, has been used. Thymic agriculture is to look at T cell colony formation and T cell uh, uh, progenitor numbers uh, has been developed. And thymic organ cultures have been developed to, to look at uh, maturation steps within the thymus. These all produce T cells uh, ex vivo, but most of these systems are very inefficient in terms of getting T cell production out. And just uh, uh, in the early 2000s, uh, uh, there were uh, uh, several groups looking at uh, ex vivo uh, T cell development. And they used a particular uh, uh, matrix, and this was produced by Cytomatrix. It was a company out of Boston. And uh, it's a carbon-based matrix material 
that has been coated with uh, a metal, uh, tantalum, 